हाँ बसमीम् अल्लाम दस सात करीम एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग एंड रिवाइजिंग और बिजनेस स्टडीज चैप्टर्स फॉर फर्स्ट सेक्शन अलहमदिल्ला वी आर फिनिश और सिलेबस एंड नाउ वी आर डूइंग द रिविजन सो वन ऑफ द टॉपिक ऑफ द फर्स्ट सेक्शन बिजनेस ऑब्जेक्टिव एंड स्टेक होल्डर्स वॉट आर बिजनेस ऑब्जेक्टिव objectives of the business are uh, the aims or targets towards which the business would like to achieve in future business objectives there are different business objectives such as to make a profit to expand the business to increase added value to achieve business survival to provide a service then the question comes in what are who are the stakeholders so stakeholders are different groups which are involved in and affected by or have some interest in the business activity so uh, we have internal stakeholders and uh, external stakeholders now who are the internal stakeholders who are linked and who are connected within the business organization for example owners investors partners workers we have managers so they are uh, typically speaking as internal stakeholders again stakeholders are the one who are connected or who has interest direct or indirect interest into the business then we have external stakeholders external stakeholders are one consumers government community so there is an endless list whoever connected again who has interest in the business so they are uh, say you know uh, so they are the external stakeholders even bank is the external stakeholder uh, we have suppliers they are the external stakeholder as well uh, then uh, why business objectives would change over time and then uh, one by one we are going to discuss these uh, objectives and the stakeholders and how they are connected a uh, business objectives would change over time would be the best example nowadays when we say we have a, a you know covid a second wave of the covid and because of second wave we have a second time lockdown and due to the lockdown uh, businesses are facing recession and what is recession the recession is a slow down in the economy when uh, goods and services are not produces as it used to be and why they are not producing because there is no demand and always remember supply follows the demand so a business after survive survival period when the things are getting better so after survival period would change as its objectives of higher profits a business has achieved higher market share and now has the objectives of higher return for shareholders a uh, high market share for example like bharat and jais they get together they did not have that high market share as compared to ufone and all jazz already had it but when we speak in terms of varis so varis thought varit thought ke okay it would be a good idea to to join hands uh, with uh, jazz so that they can compete with the ufone and now they are having the higher market share after achieving higher market share they say ke okay uh, high return for shareholders and business return means profit so whoever invested so now it is our ultimate responsibility to say give a good profit on their investment next would be why business objectives would change over time a profit making business operates in a country facing a serious recession now has the short term objectives of survival examples airlines in corona virus uh, time you know so that could be the one because it's not necessary that this time is going to be remain forever just like when we speak in terms of like say, september and october so things were better, getting better uh when uh, before the second wave hit out so uh, inshallah things will get better again now look, let's look into the business objectives one by one the first objectives we are going to say a business survival uh, we can shuffle them uh, accordingly just like sometimes we again come back from profit to the business survival so it keep changing but very first time whenever any business is going to start a business is is in the survival period because it may take some time 
to uh, get to know to get customers you know to do the marketing and promotion and people uh, getting the business uh, uh, you know gradually so uh, through the marketing through, through the promotion through the word of mouth uh, and uh, once the business settled down uh, not only covering the fixed fixed cost but also the variable cost and you know getting some profits as well so then they change their uh, business objective from survival to making a profit after some time when we say okay, okay after making a profit we say to expand the business because we believe in expansion and growth and there are two ways uh, for exp expansion we have internal growth and external growth that's what we are going to study in detail in chapter three internal growth means uh, that we are going to uh, open different branches within the same organization for example uh, saint gregory open different branches or uh, it could you know uh, open the franchise system as well uh, say by giving franchise to other uh, men, uh, people so but with the same name of the saint gregory just like uh, beacon beacon house uh, did with the uh, name of uh, educators and city school did with, with the name of the smart school and we have other examples as well and uh, the other way around that for expansion is could be the external growth with the merger or takeover just like varid and jazz did that to increase added value there is no question about that that there is more profits for uh, in terms of value addition and how business could add value by making their business uh, uh, more uh, worthy and how could it be possible i gave i give you the example for example uh, one can of pepsi if you go to the store is going to be uh, say 50 rupees if you go to the food court is going to be 100 rupees but if you go to the five star hotel so it's going to be 300 rupees now the same person who just bought two days ago 50 rupees of can of pepsi and uh, uh, willingly and happily paying 300 rupees because uh, of the value addition the environment uh, you know uh, the environment really counts in terms of music or in terms of uh, air conditioning or uh, that you know the environment of the five star hotel and all so that's really worth it to provide a service how a business is going to provide a service that that is a question uh, we have a concept called csr corporate social responsibility and what this concept is that business has a responsibility not only provided goods but also serving to the community as well because we are living in this very world we breathe in this world so this is our ultimate responsibility not to create uh, uh, create pollution because when we speak in terms of pollution we have air pollution sea pollution noise pollution so we supposed to have a sustainable environment what does that mean that we want to make sure that we are going to recycle the products have environmental friendly products okay and uh, just like uh, uh, if we have uh, shoppers so we want to make sure that they are going to dissolve them quickly and uh, if we are dealing with the plastic so we do make sure that we use as less plastic as possible because it may take some time to get it dissolved we can also provide a service to the community by having say uh, garage schools or giving some equipments to the hospitals um, and so on so this is how every business could uh, serve a community and do its role so uh, this is it for the business uh, objectives and stakeholders uh, the, let's uh, review enterprise business and growth that is chapter 3 when we speak in terms of enterprise business and growth first we let's look into what are the qualities of a successful entrepreneur uh, it's supposed to be self driven goal oriented confident and passionate 
when we say self driven most small business owners are driven to succeed they want to see their business grow and trust me uh, this is the difference between the employer and employee owner uh, and workers uh, because uh, the driving force uh, led the person to fulfill his or her dream and because there are so many people just thinking about it they want to start a business but they won't be able to do it so what is really important is the driving force goal oriented most successful business owners take time to set goals so they have clarity about where they are going and how they intend to get there uh you supposed to be goal oriented you supposed to uh, set targets um, and it's very uh, important to set goals because if you fail to plan you are actually planning to fail and uh, supposed to have a destination where you are leading where you are getting there uh entrepreneur means owner supposed to be confident the most successful business owners have a steady quiet confidence but should not be arrogant supposed to be down to earth passionate it can be very difficult to overcome the challenges of starting and running a successful business especially in the starting and especially nowadays when uh, so many sunrise business and so many startup business they failed or they closed down because they did not have enough cash in the lockdown period so that's really crucial you supposed to do the homework and you need to look into it that okay okay uh, you supposed to have enough cash at least for 2 years so that you can uh, cover the recession period and you supposed to pay from your pocket the other qualities of successful entrepreneur supposed to be budget minded his ability to know what funds you have available where to reduce expenses and this is the key thing only those businesses nowadays survive who have minimum expenses because the expenses really eat in up your business especially the rent thing and how to manage cash flow is very important quality a successful entrepreneur has uh, liquidity is the crunch thing liquidity is the ability of the company to pay off its short term obligation and to meet day to day expenses so this is really important a good communicator is one of the most important quality of a successful entrepreneur as he should be good at delegating communicating his goals to workers and negotiate with the suppliers also entrepreneur supposed to be hard worker should not look at the clock like 9 to 5 should be ready to work and willing to work for long hours and short holidays are required to run the business especially when business is just started creative uh, new ideas about product service and ways of attracting new customers in order to differentiate his business from existing competitors supposed to be really creative because this is what a successful business nowadays has supposed to be innovation and creativity so that you can distinct your business from the competitors when we speak in terms of uh, growth just like i was discussing in the topic of uh, business objectives and stakeholders growth has there are two ways of growing a business internal growth and external growth internal growth means expansion of a business by means of opening new branches shops or factories uh, this growth can be very slow however it can avoid problem of excessively fast growth which tend to lead to inadequate capital over trading and management problems associated with bringing two business together that often have different attitudes and cultures and uh, mind you whenever we speak in terms of internal growth means the same business opening different branches like mizan banks opening different branches within the same name of mizan bank same is the case with the imtiaz and so on when we say external growth so two different business they uh, actually merge together or the bigger business taken over the smaller business just like we did discuss about merging uh, varid and jess or uh, there is a small company ice cream company called polka when walls came in so it took over polka and most of the time it does happen that whenever the big uh, multinational comes into the market eating up the small company just close uh, buy them and close them down so that there won't be any more competition 
So external growth is achieved by means of merging with or taking over another business from either the same or a different industry. Uh, this form of growth is often referred to as integration as it involves bringing together two or more firms. So there are uh, two types of horizontal and, and vertical integration. Now, this is really important. I need your attention here. Horizontal integration union of same industry means uh, bank merges with the another bank. This is the example of the tertiary business. Full MR merges with the, uh, say, uh, you know, uh, Gulamad merges with the uh, Nishat and all. So that could be the example. Uh, there are opportunities for economies of scale as well. The combined business will have a bigger share of the market than either firm before the integration. The combined business will have a bigger share of the total market than either firm before the integration. When we say uh, forward vertical integration, forward vertical integration, same industry but later stage, example textile mill take over retail outlets. The merger gives an assured outlet for their products. The profit margin made by the retailer is absorbed by the expanded business. Uh, the retailer could be prevented from selling to competitors. So this is the example of the forward vertical integration, especially it is really feasible when you are going to open your own outlet, just like uh, Satrangi by Bonanza or uh, Ideas by the Gulamad, so that you don't face any competition. Then we have backward vertical integration when uh, we say that okay that uh, we are going to have a control of the supplying as well suppliers so backward vertical integration same industry but earlier stage example textile mill takes over cotton farms the merger gives an assured supply of important components the profit margin of the supplier is absorbed by the expanded business cost of components and supplies for the manufacturer could be controlled so this is how the advantages of backward vertical integration uh, conglomerate merger. Conglomerate mergers uh, involves a merger between two businesses that are not related to each other. That is completely different. As for example, shoemaker take over cement factory. Uh, with this type of merger, the company can cross sell its product to the customers of the other company. Uh, the business has the option to utilize the managers from different sectors into its business whenever the need arises. It helps the business to achieve economies of scale, various costs of the business. So this is what the advantage. I always give the example of the master. The master is having the multi-form. Master is having the, say, uh, you know, uh, tiles, uh, bathroom accessories. So they, this is how they are diversifying. Who would find it useful comparing the size of the business? Uh, investors, governments, competitors, workers, and banks. So investors, before deciding which business to put their savings into, governments often there are different tax rates for small and large businesses. Competitors to compare their size and importance with other firms. Uh, workers to have some ideas of how many people they might be working with. And banks to see how important a loan to the business is compared to its overall size. Now there are different way, uh, ways we can compare the size of the business by value of output by number of employees, by sales, by profits, and by capital employed. Why do some business likely to remain small? Mind you, we are having the revision. This is why we are brushing up the concepts. Uh, we already got into detail. The type of industry the business operates in. Here are some of uh, examples uh, of industries where most uh, firms remain small, hairdressing, car repairs, window cleaning, convenience stores, and plumbers. Uh, market size, if the total number of potential customers is small, then the business are likely to remain small as only few customers would afford it. For example, exotic cars, expensive fashion clothing remain small. Owners objective, some owners prefer to keep their businesses small in order to avoid the stress and worry of running a large business. Why some business fail? Poor management because most uh, failure to plan for change. Most important thing, poor financial management, just like I discussed, cash position 
over expansion spend too much difficult to control and last but not the least list of uh, risk of new business startup this is it for today uh, take care of yourself make sure you do the assignment i'm going to upload it apna baat khayal rakhiyega okay i'll see you in the next class allah hafiz